Okay. Um, I'm Laura. Uh, my topic is uh, usability and material design, and it's something I'm really passionate about. And I think it may be helpful to keep some of these um, ideas in mind as we launch into the capstone phase. Um, so I'm going to talk about now about general usability. Uh, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, uh, this guy Jakob Nielsen wrote a paper that still holds true today, um, where he outlined a bunch of uh, heuristics, uh, which are general guidelines or rules that can be followed, but very general. Um, the first one is uh, visibility of system status. So uh, the system should always let us keep users informed about what's going on through appropriate feedback. Um, one implementation of this is progress bars. They let the user know uh, that the system is still there and not to abandon all hope that anything will ever happen, um, and also can give an approximate uh, estimation of how much longer it may take until whatever task you're uh, doing is uh, complete. Another is um, match between the system and the real world. So um, one way to implement this is through skeuomorphism. Um, skeuomorphic uh, objects mimic real life objects in digital space. Um, and one way to, or one implementation of this that's very well known is in the iOS Notepad app, or where the background of the Notepad is yellow and it mimics what a real Notepad really looks like, or in the library app where the but you can see uh, bookshelves or wooden bookshelves that mimic what a real library actually looks like. Um, drawing these types of parallels help users understand um, parallels between the digital world and the real world um, and can really increase and help usability. Um, another one is user control and freedom. Um, users should always know how to exit every state. Uh, very important, clearly mark your exits and um, support undo and redo. Uh, very helpful. Um, help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. So if there is an error, state what caused that error and say it in plain language, human language, things that we can understand, um, not using error codes. Um, even better, help the user not to have the error in the first place. Uh, yeah. So um, consistency and st uh, so several other of these uh, heuristics are consistency and standards. So uh, users should ha not have to wonder whether different word situations or actions mean the same thing in different situations. Make sure that you always follow platform conventions. Um, recognition rather than recall. So you don't want to overload the user's memory um, by making actions and options visible. The user shouldn't have to remember information. They should always, cl it should be clearly stated where they are. Um, it helps to make it m a much more usable, positive experience. Um, flexibility and efficiency of use. So um, these help um, novice users, got, you can help to guide novice users and also, um, also allow for hotkeys for expert users. Um, so users that are, have different levels of comfort, can, uh, it's easy for them to use your site, basically. Um, Aesthetic and minimalist design. Try not to overload with unnecessary elements that can be distracting or confusing um, from the main point. Um, one common or popular implementation of this is to have a one call to action, clear call to action for each view. Um, help and documentation. While you don't want it to be necessary for documentation to use your interface, um, always make sure that documentation is very easily available, easy to find, and um, indexed, and uh, well, easily searchable as well. Um, OK, so now I'm going to talk about material design um, in the context of general usability. So how can all these principles be implemented? Um, there are design, uh, design frameworks or languages that help abstract away some of these issues, and material design is one of those. It's a codification of a design language that keeps all Google designs consistent. Um, so it was uh, introduced in 2014 at the I.O. conference, and it's co it was codenamed Quantum Paper. Um, here's an example of material design implemented. It's currently taking a, a being rolled out in all of Google's applications. So you probably see it in YouTube and in Google Photos um, and in Google Music. Um, so really quickly, I just want to go over what material is. It's a very 
very in-depth um, living document um, that you can find and read more, more about it. But I just want to give a brief overview of what it means. Um, so material is solid. It exists in a, in a digital 3D world. It cannot, material cannot pass through other material. And material is one density independent pixel thick, um, which allows for consistency across different devices. Um, there's a lot of other aspects in the material design world um, that are very, very specific. But I'm going to gloss over some of the points uh, quickly and then describe how you can include um, material design in your next project. Um, so elevation and shadows. Every UI element um, inside of the application exists at a different um, depth. So the, at the highest depth or closest to the user is the dialogue. And at the lowest is the switch, which is at 1 dp. Um, the, you know, the menus and navigation and the floating action button exist at varying levels. Space there are different levels of height. And they also all cast different types of shadows depending on if they're in their rested or elevated state. Um, this is just a diagram. Um, one of the rule, a lot of the rules in the material design world govern how objects move, um, how light passes through them. Um, one of the rules is to avoid linear spatial paths because they can be jarring and look unnatural. Um, another one is um, to sh show the surface reaction to the user input um, and to help the user understand that they, that the, they are re interacting with the user interface and that it, it is responsive to them. Um, one nice, delightful implementation of this is that when a user triggers the creation of new material, it should grow in size starting from the point of input, which it can be confusing if it starts from another point. Um, also, the surface reaction. So that was kind of what I was going over before. The surface provides a visual confirmation of every point of contact. Um, OK, so there are two implementations that Google officially supports of material design. One is Polymer, and the other is Angular Material. Since um, we are working with Angular, um, material, uh, Angular Material seems to be the obvious choice for us, and we uh, utilized it in our, or our team utilized it in our stack store. So I had uh, experience using it for the first time, which was uh, pretty interesting. Um, so getting started with Angular Material. You can npm install Angular Material, and it has two dependencies, ng-animate and ng-aria. You just need to make sure to include those in your Angular module. Uh, you also need to include the style sheet and include the four script tags um, that you can serve from your node modules or from um, the, re the CDN. Um, one of the things that I found to be difficult or different with this framework versus other frameworks like Bootstrap is that it has a very um, intense uh, theming provider. So in order to choose your color palettes, um, it ha and color palettes within the material design world are very, um, you have three color palettes. So you have your primary color palette, your accent color palette, and your worn color palette. Your primary color palette exists of hues. So Google suggests that you use uh, the 500 hue for your main hue, and that other hues are supporting within that, and that you may choose one accent if you so desire, and then you can have a warm palette worn palette. I found it really difficult to manipulate the colors easily when we were using Angular Material, so I just wanted to include a quick example of how you can do that. Um, also, if you don't want to use one of the predefined palettes, in, um, you can create your own palette. That could be helpful if you're designing for a brand that already has their own color scheme that you need to um, utilize. So you, one of the things that's interesting about this to actually use the, conf the Angular module config function in order to inject these services, like the MD theming provider. There's also an MD icon provider that you can use um, to declare all your variables. You can create your own custom palettes if you'd like, and then you can also choose what types of palettes, what palette you'd like for your primary palette, your accent palette, and your worn palette. Um, 
Okay. These are some uh, some additional resources I'd really encourage you to read. They're very interesting um, and a lot more information on this topic. Thanks. <laughs>